Hello, my name is Patricia Finney, also known as P.F. Chisholm. I write the Sir Robert Carey um, historical crime novels and I write a lot of other things as, as well. And this is the historical novelist's guide to dot 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 hats. Because hats are weird. Hats are very peculiar. You see, up until the late 1960s, everybody, but everybody, always wore a hat. Look at movies, look at documentary film, everybody was wearing a hat. And that goes was true for the whole of Europe, America, Russia, everybody wore hats. And the 15th and 16th century was no different. Everybody wore hats. And sometime around 1960 and 1970, suddenly everybody stopped wearing a hat. And I remember this very clearly because my father always used to go to work. He was a barrister. He wore a very three-piece suit. He carried a briefcase. He had an umbrella. And of course, he had a bowler hat. And he looked a bit like John Cleese, actually but much better looking. My father was much better looking than John Cleese. He wore that bowler hat. He was very proud of it. It was a nice bowler hat. And he walked to the station every morning, walked back every evening. And then suddenly, really suddenly, he stopped wearing his bowler hat. He went into a cupboard and was never seen again. Why did that happen? I don't know. But I do know that movies that show anybody in the past, before 1960, not wearing a hat is historically inaccurate. And it's, it's actually starting to uh, spoil my enjoyment of movies because I just sit there and where's the hat? Where's your hat? Where's your hat? So in the, in the 16th century, what kind of hat you wore uh, depended very much on what level of a person you were. An ordinary person with no particular status, a normal labouring man, a working man, would at the very least wear a statute cap. The statute cap was a blue woolen item, a bit like a beanie, uh, not terribly well shaped. It was better to wear something else, but if you couldn't wear anything else, you would wear your statute cap. And it was called a statute cap because there was actually an act of parliament that said all men from the age of five years old had to wear a statute cap. And this was to help the British woolen industry, the, the English woolen industry. Obviously, if you could afford something better, you did. So there were a vast variety of different hats and caps and things that you could wear. And women also had to wear a cap. Now they wore a white, they, if they were unmarried, they didn't have to wear a cap and they would often display their hair down their back with just maybe a little cap on the top. Um, a married woman or a widow was expected to wear a linen hat, a linen cap over her hair and hiding all her hair. And then on top of that, if she could afford it, she would wear a hat, something Again, enormous in variety. Towards the end of the century, uh, beaver hats were coming in. These were made of beaver skin. They were very smart and they were very tall, so they looked very good. We think of them as the uh, Puritan style of hats. So a woman wore two hats, a man wore one hat. Now, a woman, to show respect, kept her hat on at all times. The only time she took her cap off was in her bedroom. A man, to show respect, would take his hat off. Not very logical there, but there you go. And this, when you took your hat off, who you took your hat off to, was a subject of enormous amounts of, of cultural rules and regulations, and you'd better keep an eye on all of them. If you wanted to be regarded as a person, you had to wear a hat, basically. So. What happened? Why did we stop wearing them? I have no idea. I think perhaps it may have had something to do with shampoo. I think that shampoo is what stopped people wearing hats because suddenly their hair was all lovely and clean, and clean of grease, 
and they were not so frightened of lice because lice are at least slowed down by hats and caps. It, it makes it harder for lice to jump from one to move from one to the next because they can't actually jump like fleas. They have to crawl. So maybe this whole obsession with hats and caps was about keeping the lice down. I don't know. I really don't know. Any ideas? Do tell me about it. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you very much for ro scrolling down, leaving a comment. Uh, if you want to make me very happy, you can go and to patriciafinney.com and sign up for my email list if you haven't already done so. And this is Patricia Finney taking her hat off to you for watching.